Hello everyone, I'm your host Shambhavi and you're watching Life Law. Today we'll be talking about a topic that's been making waves in the legal community. The recent remarks by Chief Justice of India D. B. Chandrachud regarding Justice V. R. Krishna Iyer, one of India's most iconic jurists. These remarks have sparked heated debates in the legal world, particularly about the interpretation of private property rights in our constitution. Before we get into the specifics of the case, let's set the stage with a brief introduction to Justice Krishna Ayer and Justice Chinappa Reddy, who were central figures in the judgment that has sparked these discussions. Justice V.R. Krishna Ayer was a judge of the Supreme Court of India from 1973 to 1980, and he is remembered for his bold and progressive judgments, which always upheld the true spirit of the Constitution. A champion of social justice, he made groundbreaking contributions in areas like constitutional law, labor law, human rights, criminal law and environmental law. His judgments often advocated for the downtrodden and his legal philosophy centered on human dignity and social justice. One of his landmark decisions was in the habeas corpus case during the emergency period, which has continued to influence Indian civil rights discourse. Along with Justice Krishna Ayer, Justice Chanapa Reddy was also a prominent figure in the Indian judiciary. He was known for his advocacy of economic justice and his belief in the constitution as a living document that must adapt to changing socio-economic contexts. His significant contributions include his emphasis on distributive justice and his judgments on land reforms and equitable resource allocation. The recent judgment titled Private Property and Material Resources of the Community revolved around private property rights and overruled previous views expressed by Justice Krishna Ayer in State of Karnataka versus Ranganath Reddy, where he emphasized that land reforms and redistribution of resources align with Article 39b, making private property subordinate to public welfare. And by Justice Yanapa Reddy in Minerva Mills versus Union of India, where he argued for the supremacy of directive principles over fundamental rights to achieve economic justice. This is Krishna Iyer in Ranganath Reddy viewed Article 39b as a tool to justify state acquisition of private property for public good. His interpretation leaned on socialist principles suggesting that material resources of the community include private property. This is Anapa Reddy in Minerva Mills highlighted the necessity of prioritizing directive principles like Article 39b and c over fundamental rights like Articles 14 and 19, arguing that economic justice is foundational to achieving the constitutional vision of equality. The majority judgment elucidated by C.J. Chandrachud stated that the constitution allows for economic democracy, introducing the idea that private property is not an absolute right, but one that can be regulated in the public interest. At its core, this judgment examines whether private property rights can be subordinated to the state's interest in pursuing economic democracy a principle that implies economic policies should serve the broader social welfare and ensure equitable access to resources. In the judgment, the court overturned a previous position taken by Justices Ayer and Reddy, who had upheld that land reforms and limitations on property rights were necessary to ensure social equity. The ruling now affirms that private property is subject to reasonable restrictions which can be justified based on the larger public good. Before we move into Chief Justice Chandrachud's remarks, it's important to understand the precedents that laid the groundwork for this decision. The Ranganath Reddy judgment that all private properties means of production will fall within the material resources of the community irrespective of the nature and the Koch judgment which endorsed Justice Krishna Iyer's view were key cases that dealt with the relationship between property rights and the broader principles of social justice and economic welfare. In these judgments, the Supreme Court acknowledged that while private property is protected by the constitution, it could be regulated and restricted under the doctrine of public interest and economic democracy. These decisions set the tone for Justice Ayer's and Reddy's viewpoints, but also laid the foundation for the more nuanced interpretation that the Supreme Court has adopted today. 
Chief Justice Chandrachud's remarks regarding Justice Krishna Iyer were nothing short of significant. While acknowledging Justice Iyer's contribution to legal thought, he emphasized that the interpretation of private property rights must evolve with the changing needs of society. Chandrachud pointed out that the Constitution of India, while guaranteeing property rights, also recognizes that those rights are not absolute and can be subject to reasonable regulation by the state to promote economic welfare and democracy. Justice Ayer's views, while progressive in their time, were grounded in a vision of economic justice that may no longer align with the current constitutional interpretation, according to Chandrachud. This tension between legal tradition and modern-day constitutional interpretation has sparked an intense debate within the judiciary. Chief Justice Chandrachud critiqued Justice Ayer's reliance on Marxist economic theories, stating, The doctrinal error in the Krishna Ayer approach was postulating a rigid economic theory, which advocates greater state control over private resources as the exclusive basis for constitutional governance. A single economic theory which views the acquisition of private property by the state as the ultimate goal would undermine the fabric of our constitutional framework. He emphasized that the judiciary's role is to facilitate the constitutional vision of economic democracy rather than enforcing rigid economic ideologies. Quote unquote, the role of this court is not to lay down economic policy, but to facilitate this intent of the framers to lay down the foundation for an economic democracy. The Krishna Iyer doctrine does a disservice to the broad and flexible spirit of the constitution. However, the disservice remark is not found in the final uploaded version of CGI Chandrachud's judgment. Following Chandrachud's remarks, Justices Naga Ratna and Dhulia voiced their concerns about the CGI's comments on Justice Krishna Iyer. They argued that the remarks might undermine the judicial legacy of Justice Iyer and questioned the oversimplification of his views. Justice Naga Ratna in particular emphasized the need for respectful engagement with judicial precedents, especially when the judges in question have contributed significantly to the evolution of Indian constitutional law. The disagreement highlights a critical tension between respecting judicial precedents and the need for judicial reforms that reflect the changing socio-political landscape of the country. This is Nagaratna termed the CGI's observation as unwarranted and unjustified and elaborated on a disagreement in the following words. Merely because of the paradigm shift in the economic policies of the state to globalization and liberalization and privatization, compendiously called the reforms of 1991, which continue to do so till date, cannot result in branding the judges of this court of the yester years as doing a disservice to the constitution. I say that the institution of the Supreme Court of India is greater than individual judges who are only a part of it at different stages of history of this great country. Therefore, I do not concur with the observations of the learned Chief Justice in the proposed judgment. Justice Dulia supported the socialist principles upheld by Justice Reddy. He observed that the directive principles of state policy, including Article 39b, continue to play a vital role in achieving a social and economic equity in India. And Reddy's approach emphasized distributive justice and the need to view the constitution as a living document that evolves with time. Justice Dulia further stated, while directive principles cannot override fundamental rights, they act as the cornerstone for creating a welfare state. Justice Reddy's philosophy ensured that economic justice remains a guiding force in policy making. Justice Dulia, while endorsing the views expressed by Justices Ayer and Chinappa Reddy, stated, Before I conclude, I must also record here my strong disapproval on the remarks made on the Krishna Ayer doctrine, as it is called. This criticism is harsh and could have been avoided. The Krishna Ayer doctrine, or for that matter, the O Chinappa Reddy doctrine, is familiar to all who have anything to do with law or life. It is based on strong humanist principles of fairness and equity. It is a doctrine which has illuminated our path in dark times. The long body of their judgment is not just a reflection of their perspicacious intellect, but more importantly, of their empathy for the people as a human being was at the center of their judicial philosophy. 
in the words of Justice Krishna Iyer himself, the courts too have a constituency, the nation and a manifesto, the constitution. The remarks by Chief Justice Chandrachud on Justice Krishna Iyer raise fundamental questions about how the constitution should be interpreted and applied in today's world. While Krishna Iyer's views on economic justice were revolutionary in their time, the evolving nature of property rights in India challenges us to constantly re-examine the balance between individual rights and public good. The ongoing debates between judicial precedents and the evolving needs of society will continue to shape the future of India's legal system. Justice Ayer's contributions to Indian jurisprudence remain pivotal, but the legal community must continue to adapt and evolve in the face of modern challenges. Do you think the views of Justice Krishna Ayer are still relevant in today's context? How should the courts balance individual rights and the public interest? Let us know your thoughts in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more legal insights.